Now that you understand the first three parts of creating accountability, I want to talk to you about the distinction between compliance and commitment. And this is an extremely powerful distinction as a leader. As a matter of fact, in explaining this to you, I'm going to give you a great story to kind of anchor this for you. But in explaining this to you, I'm also going to distinguish some of the differences between leadership and management, right? The difference between leading someone and managing someone, which is really powerful stuff. And I think both are necessary, just like yin and yang, leading and managing. They're kind of two parts of the same process, two sides of the same coin. So not one is better than the other, but definitely there's a there's an effect of being a manager versus being a leader, and I want you to see that. So compliance versus commitment. Well, what are we talking about? Like, think about it in your own mind. Like, what is the difference between compliance and commitment? I mean, you've you've put in the effort to create accountability by following the steps in my previous videos. And the whole purpose of that ultimately is to have a team that wants to be successful, that wants to show up as their best, that wants to deliver, that's open to communication, that's open to feedback, right? And a team that's doing that, they're coming from a place of commitment. And commitment is created because of the, the, the leadership space of the leader, which is really to say the environment that you create around you, right? Whereas other people, they're not gonna create an environment of commitment where people show up with their heart really wanting to win. They're not. They're only going to create an environment of compliance. And that's because that type of person is not leading. They're only managing. They're just trying to get people to get something done. They're not trying to empower people to be great in what they're doing. And that's what I want to talk about. So I would just simply define compliance as doing the bare minimum to get the job done and not get fired. Just literally you're hired to do this. That's all you do. Okay. Commitment would be delivering everything you were hired to do and doing it with a positive, energized attitude and spirit that drives other people to be great. And that's the kind of team you want to have around you. So let's talk about a story real quick to kind of bring this together and then I can distinguish leading and managing for you a little bit more. So there's this show on Bravo. You know, I've written about this and there's, I just have to bring it up. It's so great, right? There's this show on Bravo about... Um, I think it's called Below Deck, right? And I love this show. I think it's so fun to watch. And there's a lot of leadership lessons that come from this show, right? And I have a lot of respect for everybody in the show. So I'm not putting anybody down. But there was this one episode. I'm going to use different names, okay? There's this one episode. Um, let's call the one guy uh, Bill. And we'll call the other guy Tom, all right? And so let's say Tom is the leader in this scenario, you know, the higher up and uh, Bob is the, the the employee of the worker, right? And so it's very interesting as you watch the dynamic between these two characters because, because Tom is very exact. He's very military in a sense. His buzz haircut is very, you know, tight, perfect, you know, structured, you know, behavior in every way, you know, and he demands, he wants and he demands like compliance and everything. Everything's got to be a certain way. Whereas Bob is like way more chill, way more relaxed. You know, he wears flip flops. He's got long hair. He's kind of, you know, doing his thing. And I never forget watching these two guys interact on this show. And I'm just kind of amazed that it is what I'm watching because Bob's basically just barely doing his job. He's barely wiping down the windows and swabbing the deck, you know, whatever, if that's the language, but he's barely doing it. And so Tom comes in, he's like, Bob, why aren't you doing your job? And Bob says, well, I am doing my job. And Tom says, yeah, but you're not really doing it. You're not really doing it. You're just kind of doing it. And you know what Bob says to Tom right to his face? He says, well, you know, I'm not really inspired to do it. And I feel like you don't inspire me, Bob says to Tom, to his, his boss, right? He's like, I don't feel like you inspire me. And you know what Tom said to Bob? Tom says, it's not my job to inspire you. And Bob says, well, you know, what can I tell you? I'm just going to do what I got to do uh, to not get fired. And that's about what I'm going to get out of me. And Tom is so pissed because he doesn't understand why he can't get the best out of this other person. And I'll tell you exactly why. It's because Tom didn't understand, in my estimation, he didn't understand the distinction between leading and managing. Which do you think Tom was doing to Bob? Do you think Tom was leading Bob or managing Bob? And you know the answer, right? Tom was managing Bob. The only thing Tom cared about was that Bob got his job done. Tom didn't care about Bob as a person. 
He didn't respect Bob as a, a sovereign being, another human on the planet that has, frankly, divinity and autonomy that is worthy of being understood and cared for and actually, you know, in, engaged with in a way that actually showed respect and even, you know, a, a, like, a, like a friendly love in a sense. Like, I think that word love, we always use it romantic, but if you come back to the Greek, right, eros, philia, uh, agape, right? Eros is romantic, philia is friendship, and agape is unconditional. Like, if you bring that friendship energy to every interaction, I'm not saying don't hold people accountable, don't have clear rules, don't have clear process, and let people run over you, but say that at all. What I'm saying is if you bring a spirit of respect, caring, connection, desire for others to feel comfortable and safe, then you're going to start to generate the level of relationship that brings commitment. Right? You're going to de develop a relationship that brings out the best in people. What am I trying to say? It's this simple. Management's about what you're doing. It's about the process. Leadership's about who you're being. It's about the people. So when Tom is saying do your job, all he's focused on is the process. He's just trying to manage an outcome. But if he actually got to know Bob a little bit and get to know like, why do you like your hair long? Why do you like to wear flip-flops? Why did you get into yachting? What do you see for your future? How do you want to be treated? What do I do to bring out the best in you? You know, what kind of drinks do you like? What kind of music? Let's get to know each other a little bit. There's another video I did called Background Relatedness. That's what this is about. If Tom would have actually respected Bob as a human being who has the choice to do whatever he wants in life and actually try to connect with him at a human level, then he would have been able to connect at a leadership level because leadership's about people. Management's about process. Leadership's about people. So if you want to bring out commitment in people, you can't treat people as just a cog in a wheel, as just part of a process. You got to treat them as a fellow sovereign being on the earth. You got to treat them as someone who's worthy of connection and respect and well-being and then get to know that other person, not as your employee, but as a human. And then inside of that relationship, that level of trust and communication, now you can make a demand on them to be accountable. You can say, hey, Bob, listen, we got to get to work, bro. Okay, here's what I need. I need you to do X, Y, Z, and it's done at this time, and let me know when it's done. You ready? Okay, go. Boom. That's how you create commitment. Why? Because everything I said was coming out of a background of connection where this other person knows that I value them and I respect them, and I care about them, and I want them to win, and I expect excellence, and I deserve it, because that's the kind of leader I am. That's the kind of leader I want you to be. I want you to connect with people from the level of the heart, not just the head. Connect them as a human being. And then when you lay out your plans, now you're leading and managing. Lead first, manage second. Lead the person, manage the process. When you bring those two together, you're gonna get compliance and commitment. And when you use the four steps of accountability based on this level of relationship, you're going to execute incredibly well.